All right, guys. This is uh, Guns and Gear Network, a new channel we're starting, and uh, it's going to be uh, obviously uh, guns, gear, products, uh, outdoor type stuff. Um, just uh, anyway, this is our first video, and what I thought I would uh, share with you guys is what I call my not so budget precision rifle build. Uh, been quite a few videos about precision rifle builds and different ones that uh, people have done. Um, I started out uh, back some time ago with this rifle and uh, things have changed, kind of evolved with it and I was gonna, I'll explain some of that during the video, but uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the rifle and the equipment. A lot of this individual components that I'm gonna talk about um, or show you what's on this particular rifle. There's other reviews, I'm not gonna go into a lot of details about most of it um, because there are other um, videos already available that pretty much explains uh, about everything that I'm pretty much using here. But I'm going to go over kind of the cost and what I did and, and so forth. Um, the original goal for this particular build was to try to stay around the $1,000 budget. Um, and I actually accomplished that. And um, maybe just a tick over, or just a little bit over $1,000 when I was all said and done. Um, the way I was able to accomplish that originally um, was a little different scope and um, some other components and I'll explain the difference and why I changed them out and so forth. There's nothing wrong with my original configuration but I've always said if people have more confidence in their equipment they just I don't know it's, some, it's kind of psychological I, I believe you just shoot a little better but uh, either way there was nothing wrong with most of the components I had I didn't really have any issues with them I just wanted to upgrade a little bit and still stay within what I consider my budget but um, again it became a not so budget budget uh, rifle when it all said none or uh, in the grand scheme of Precision rifles, I still consider it a, a budget build, and, and I'll kind of go over the difference. Um, the rifle itself, the base rifle, was, and I've got a list here. I'll be going down trying to make sure I go over everything with you guys. And I've got this on a, this camera's a Kodak, I don't know, Sportsman, something or another maybe. Um, it's not that great, and the lighting isn't that great. I'm kind of new at the whole YouTube thing, but y'all you know, work with me, and hopefully things will get better as I learn about how to do a little production with these videos. Um the uh, the rifle itself was a uh, I bought it new uh, from a local dealer here in my hometown and it's a Savage Model 10 P dash SR in a 308 uh, configuration. The uh, Savage is uh, kind of known for doing small production run type stuff, where it's a Model P or dash or whatever. And uh, this one in particular, um, I, I'm not 100% sure if they still make it or not. Uh, but when I bought this, I think I paid 580 out the door for it. I was taxing everything. Uh, in its original stock configuration, uh, it came with a. Um, uh, I think it was a four-round detachable magazine. It did have the tactical bolt knob. Um, it had um, also a, uh, a threaded muzzle, so that's what the SR uh, stands for, espresso ready. Um, so it had uh, that, and um, it. Uh, and I'll just read you what it basically says on their website: black synthetic stock uh, with beaver tail, four-end detachable magazine, oversized uh, tactical bolt handle, 18-inch threaded heavy uh, barrel. Um, 1 in 10 twist uh, 5R rifling. And it also, let's see if I can pull this up here, has the uh, Accu trigger. And from the factory, this one was set at a pound and a half uh, from the factory. So that was kind of the stock configuration, you know, just right out of the box from the dealer. Um, so, but uh, one of the few things, one of the first few things I did uh, was change out the stock. The original stock, you know, it's pretty typical. Um, uh, factory stock kind of flimsy just not that great most most of these companies know you're going to replace that anyway um, if you're not going to replace it they figure the type sheet and you're going to do it would sacrifice like hunting you know just hunting application or something um, you know range plinking and that sort of thing but for a little more serious use I would suggest an upgrade um, trying to stick within my budget I went with the Choate uh, machine and tool uh, tactical stock Stocks are very good stock for the money. Uh, I think I got it at Midway USA. Um, the stock was, and I'll tell you here in a second, two hundred and seven dollars is what I paid for the stock. So pretty reasonable. It's not a McMillan or anything, but it, it definitely the price reflects that. But I don't think the quality is 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 bad at all. It's really it's, it, the only disadvantage to this particular stock. It's a little heavy. Um, it's a little heavier than most. Um, 
but it's got aluminum pillars and uh, uh, or aluminum be uh, bedding block here. Uh, it's kind of in a V configuration, and then it's uh, aluminum all through uh, the uh, fore end here. So it's pretty, it's very rigid, and uh, there was some difference in accuracy. I thought from the factory stock factory um, uh, factory stock compared to this, um, and it's uh, free floated. Also in the back here, it has. Um, spacers that you can adjust your length of pull which is nice um this this is the base model they have a couple versions of this i think one that some of this is adjustable you know just you don't have to use tools or anything it's just all adjustable but this is the kind of their base model and it comes in and like i said look just over 200 dollars. i think i got it from midway usa um on some of the add-ons what i did first thing i did this is a southwest Precision uh, Kydex cheek riser, um, very nice design. It's uh, real thick and it's real rigid and it's not going anywhere. It's uh, just really nice. Um, this particular um, item was uh, like 50 bucks. Keep in mind when you buy one of these, you do have to drill holes. I'll tell you a little funny story. When I, when I had, I actually put this on my factory stock to begin with before I upgraded. I drilled the holes wrong. Uh, it was I can't remember if it was too far forward or back, but either way, it wasn't exactly right when I when I put it on and just wasn't happy with it, so I had to re-drill. Uh, so when you're, when you're doing these, uh, kind of one of those deals, measure twice, drill once, or cut once, well, I need to do that really when you start doing upgraded stocks. You know, it's on a cheap factory stock, so no harm, no foul, really. I just, uh, matter of fact, I gave the stock away, I think, to a guy that asked about it on one of the gun forums if I had, had it, and I said, yeah, I'll just give it to you. So anyway, um, it's got a nice recoil pad um, from the factory, too. Um, that was one addition. Uh, again, that was uh, like 50 bucks. Yeah, $50. So the other addition I did, starting at the back side of the rifle, is I added the AccuShot monopod. Now, this uh, really super nice. Um, they they have a different couple different variations or a few different variations of this and the way they attach to your system. Um, the way I had to attach this one. And the, you have to be careful when you buy it to make sure you buy the correct one. And I actually called them and kind of asked them a couple questions to kind of decide exactly how I wanted to mount it or needed to mount it and then told them what I had and this is what they recommended. Um, so what I did to mount this is this particular um, monopod utilizes a Picatinny style uh, mount. So what I did was I had a piece of Magpul uh, Picatinny, that uh, little small short piece, and I drilled two holes back here. And to make sure this was kind of secure, this doesn't have a lot of you know issues as far as stress, but just to make it a little more secure, when I drilled the holes, uh, obviously drill them smaller than your screws, and then I took uh, two-part epoxy and uh, put inside the hole and put on the screw, and then uh, I think I even put some along this channel here a little bit, and then put it all in together and tighten it down, let it set up, and it's real secure at that point because it all kind of melds together inside those holes and everything and kind of secures everything, but anyway, that's how I mounted that. Um, this monopod, a lot of people don't really know how to use monopod. They'll, there's a button over here that's a quick release and you release it down and it does like that. Well, a lot of people, that's how they make their adjustment. And really the way you're supposed to do it is leave it in this configuration. Use your weak hand to make your fine adjustments this way. Um, and then once you get it in place, then be able to take your shot. But uh, And you could do it this way, but this is just a lot slower. So if you're shooting you know, a match or something, you need to get on target and, and get it leveled out pretty quick. This is the faster way to do that. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, I do use a squeeze bag probably a lot more often than I even use this. Um, but it's nice to have. It's always on the rifle. You know, It doesn't get in the way. It folds up out of the way and everything. So... And it's a lot lighter than carrying around a squeeze bag attached to your rifle. But I do have this carabiner here that um, I keep where I can attach my uh, uh, squeeze bag to it and it's kind of there. But uh, anyway, going forward of the rifle, um, one thing that I'll mention on this tactical bolt knob, which came from the factory this in this configuration, um, this is not my idea. I actually uh, stole it from a guy off of eBay. He makes uh, custom tactical knobs for different ones, and one of his knobs looks very similar to this, but he puts rubber grommets uh, that you can buy in the plumbing section, Lowe's, Home Depot, that kind of thing, um, in the grooves right here. So I did the same thing. It actually it makes it pretty nice to grab hold of. It's a little grippier, uh, like using gloves and that sort of thing. But uh, anyway, going on with the uh, what I've added, um, this right here is the SWFA SS or Super Sniper as it used to be known as, um, the 3 by 15 by 42 uh, first focal plane or some people call it front focal plane. 
Great scopes. Um, I've had uh, SWFA scopes in the past, a lot of their fixed stuff. This is the first variable I had, um, but you can, they're all over the internet as far as reviews and people talking about how great they are for the money. I can't really think of a better scope as far as what you pay for it. Um, when a lot of people compare them and say, well, if this one costs, uh, S, S, this SWFA costs 700, it compares to a $1,400, you know, name your brand. Um, so anyway, I wanted a variable. Uh, when I first built this rifle, I put a BSA um, 4x14x42 by by first focal plane that's a Midway USA exclusive. And it was a nice scope. Um, and it was surprisingly nice considering BSA, at least back in the day, used to get a lot of pretty bad rap uh, about their quality. But I was, I was pleasantly surprised based on some reviews and stuff. I went ahead and bought it. And I think that scope comes in at like, I don't know, 250 bucks maybe for Midway. Um, really nice scope. And, um, the, uh, uh, but this one, I wanted uh, a variable and I upgraded. I actually got this, uh, scope on a kind of a sale thing they were running, but anyway, I got a good deal in it. Normally this scope's going to run you about $700. So I think it's $699 and they run some specials throughout the year, Christmas and that sort of thing. Um, so I won't go into details. There's a couple of reviews already about this scope. Uh, some very knowledgeable guys that talk about this specific scope. So that's part of this whole channel is sharing information with everybody. Um, I obviously um, get a lot of my information from other people and I think uh, anytime we can share information it helps us make better decisions and purchasing and uh, that sort of thing within our budgets and I mean I, everybody can look and say oh well, you need a Schmidt and Bender or this and that well and I just didn't want to spend that kind of money and and so I decided to go with something like this and I think the quality is excellent. Um, it, uh, like I said, I won't give any details too much about each individual product because, like I said, there are other um, reviews about most of these individual products. Um, back here, I've got the Butler Creek. These are tactical um, scope caps, which doesn't really matter what they're named to me. I was just more interested in their performance. I've always used the standard Butler Creeks. I like their concept, their design, the way they do them. But the problem is they just, they're weak. Um, I broke two sets, but on this particular rifle, um, I forgot, left them up, put it in the case, whatever, you know, something like that. Just, they were just, I wish they would just step up their game just a little bit with those and, and just have a little nicer uh, plastic. Cause that's all it is. I mean, they just need to upgrade their plastic uh, the way it's, um, uh, you know, in the mold and whatever. And, the quality of plastic, but these are kind of neat. Uh, like I said, they're Butler Creek. I think they actually called tactical um, scope caps, but they're kind of a rubbery material and they're one piece. There's no two pieces to it. Um, and this is, uh, I forget what this is called, maybe self hinge or something. I don't know. You can look it up. Um, but anyway, it's all built into one and the way you do it just flips it out. And then there's a little nub right here that you take that and flip it over. So pretty easy. Uh, these won't break. You can flip them around, do whatever, and uh, they just will not break. They're a little harder to close back uh, than the traditional uh, Butler Creeks. Um, they just they don't snap in because of the rubber situation. But you can get them in there if you kind of work at it. They're just not quite as easy. Um, deploying them, just there's a little nub here. You just flip it out and it goes out. So going forward a little further, <clears throat> the rings and bases. This rifle, originally, when I started and, and kept it around the $1,000 mark, um, I had a Blackhawk, which is made in the USA, 20 MOA base, uh, aluminum, and Vortex tactical rings. Uh, the Vortex rings are nice. They're aluminum. They're a little wider than these, actually, these current ones. Um, nothing wrong with the setup I had. I never had any issues with it. It didn't lose zero or anything. I just wanted something I felt, well, you know, again, had a little more confidence in, and so I decided I wanted steel rings and bases. Um, and you can get into um, some pretty big money in rings and bases even. And after doing, again, research on the internet and looking at some gun forms and some reviews, um, I decided to go with the TPS rings and bases. And wow, these things are tanks. These things are solid. Um, for, and I've had Badger and Night Force and stuff in the past, but these in particular for the money, uh, really hard to beat. Uh, real quick on the Butler Creeks, I think I paid $35 for the pair. Um, at $12, $14 for one, $16 for the other kind of thing. Um, the TPS rings and bases, the, um, the base was 70 and the rings were 90 and I'm pretty sure those come from Midway USA also. The neat thing about these rings that's a little different than most. 
you uh, instead of laying your scope cap uh, on the top piece on and then lightly tighten them and then, then tighten in you know kind of the crisscross pattern these you can actually there's reference points underneath here that shows you where to which side to flip them around to and make sure they're lined up but these you can actually stick your scope in put these on and tighten one side down once you tighten this side down then you can it's kind of snug in there but you can make your adjustments to get your uh, um, crosshairs level and so forth or if you need front and back uh, I went ahead and got mine kind of lined up before I did all that um, I didn't want to scratch up anything but anyway then you can tighten down the other side no crisscross pattern needed uh, if you opt to do the crisscross pattern you could it wouldn't be any difference you don't have to do it their way um, but one thing about these um, if you do it the way they suggest it, it it's done, uh, you will actually have a gap on one side, uh, which most people say, you know, you need even gap or whatever. This one side will be all the way down, one side will have a gap. So just to let you know that, but these things are solid and super nice. Uh, I think they compare with some of the ones that, uh, as far as quality, uh, with some of the real top name that are real expensive. So anyway, moving on here, one thing, I, Another thing I did on the rifle, I'll turn the rifle around here so you can see it, is uh, if this thing doesn't focus, guys, like I said, this is kind of a, a little cheaper camera, so, and the lighting's kind of bad. I've kind of got some artificial light set up. It may not be the best, and if it is, I apologize. I'll get better with it as we go. Um, I did add this level. I had a different level on here, and it was the Vortex level, which it was okay. Um, it stood out on the rifle, though, on, about that far. I mean, it's pretty far, and... Um, it uh, the way it's designed it's got two lines in the middle and you line up your bubble in between the two lines and uh, which served me fine uh, I didn't like it sticking out so far though matter of fact uh, this rifle got knocked over one day and uh, this hit and uh, it kind of bent up a little section right there a little bit and I bent it back but anyway this one sits even I think looking at it, it's either flush or just be uh, just below this uh, parallax adjustment here uh, just on the inside so it's kind of compact but their designs kind of neat what they did was they shortened this span did away with the two lines in the middle and what you use as a reference point is the actual um, uh, metal itself right here these two sides that's that's your two lines what you want to line it up the bubble in between those two uh, let's see if I can do it on camera here uh, so it would look something like that where the bubble is in between there um, and it's a little quicker I think uh, instead of trying to track the two lines in the middle of you know something longer and then because you're really then looking at four lines but anyway it's SWFA um, that's good quality just like their scopes and any other products that they make um, but it's got uh, let's see if I can see it it's got a little neat SWFA logo right here that matches your uh, side uh, that they put on their uh, scopes but uh, yeah I really like that bubble level it's uh, it also uh, some of the bubble levels like my other one I had to shave off a little bit right here these are the super low rings if somebody wanted to know that so 20 MOA base with the super lows um, their measurements the way they measure their low to super low and medium and high their measurements are a little different than some of the other uh, rings so pay attention to that when you're ordering but this is the 20 MOA base, and that's a Pictini uh, base, and then the uh, super low rings. But this uh, level here, the other one I had to shave off a little bit to get it to uh, fit under. This one's still got plenty of clearance. You can actually see a lot of daylight in there. It's probably a quarter inch or better uh, underneath there. So anyway, moving on here, let's see. The uh, next thing we'll talk about is this magazine. This came with a standard little small uh, flush mount. Uh, I think it's a four round, uh, four in the magazine, one in the chamber type style uh, magazines. This is a Dark Eagle custom magazine. The way they do these, pretty neat. They take a factory magazine, take the floor plate out of it, uh, or the bottom piece, and they've made this extension. It's aluminum, got a little sight window there. You can see how many round counts you have. Uh, and then it's put in back in its place. They also change the spring out and they add a nice uh, follower here. The uh, feeds well. Uh, they're supposed to hold 10 rounds. This one uh, typically holds a nine. I can squeeze 10 in it, um, but sometimes I have a problem loading it or when the, when the bolts open, if you uh, stick this in here, it will uh, sometimes sh shoot the, <laughs> the top round out. I think it's basically not, nothing wrong with the magazine. A lot of magazines, when you're first getting them, they're... Um, 
they need to, the spring to relax a little bit to be able to uh, do what they're supposed to do. But these are great quality. Uh, like I said, they're, uh, they got some kind of anodizing. Uh, it says Dark Eagle Custom on the bottom. Uh, super nice. The other thing I did is added this. Um, this is a, again, I apologize if the light's bad, guys. This is a, a Dark Eagle Custom uh, Magazine release extension. Uh, just a little longer, it's easier to get to everything when you're trying to release your magazine. Um, like 20 bucks for that. The uh, magazine, they run about $100. If you buy two, you get a little discount. If you buy three, you get a little better discount. And I, you might get them down to like either, uh, probably $90 a piece, but you gotta buy like three of them to do that. So it's about 100 bucks for that. Um, but the good thing about this magazine, you don't have to change anything. No bottom metal change out, none of that stuff. It just works with your factory configuration. Even if you had the factory stock, um, these would work and they feed fine. Um, so yeah, they're great. All right, moving on a little further here down the line of the rifle. Harris bipod. Um, this is the notch leg version. And um, again, I'm not gonna go into details. This right here um, is, um, I think the way to go. I originally, trying to again, stay in my original budget, I had a Blackhawk. The quality was fine, the Blackhawk. It was a non-notched leg um, that I didn't like. I'm used to this uh, style and um, wound up, you know, switching to this. And prefer this. This is just the way to go, in my opinion. Um, you know, the the other one is fine if you're going to use it as a bench rifle, um, the non-notched, and the Blackhawk was pretty good quality. I think I picked it up maybe at Walmart for 40 bucks or something. These run about 100, and uh, also um, what I added was this pod lock. Now this one, make this in a couple different ways. This one is the uh, poly. They make it, I think, a metal, and then. Um, they also make it a little shorter. I think there's three links. This is maybe the medium length. I don't remember exactly, but uh, this helps you once you loosen it, you're able to make your adjustments with your rifle, uh, can't, and then you can tighten it down. A bunch of different ways people do this. Some people just get it all set up and then wrench it down. I don't do that. I normally kind of keep it medium where I can hand make my adjustment and then um, just the only thing I do is make sure it doesn't fall over. If it's like all the way loose, it'll fall over pretty easy. I want to make sure that it's just kind of holds it in place when I get uh, where I can let go of it, but not, but easily move it. So anyway, that, uh, if I didn't mention price, that was, I think, $20. And you just take off this nub here on the, from the factory version. And this also, people don't realize too, this actually is a, a ratcheting system. So if you get it over here and it's not tight enough, you can pull it over here and then be able to get it tighter, looser, and that sort of thing. Yeah, then moving on down the rifle, because this is the SR suppressor ready version, it comes uh, threaded from the factory. Now I'm running a muzzle brake. Now this is kind of a neat muzzle brake. This particular muzzle brake, uh, and I, I, if I figure out the name of it guys, I'll put it in the bottom comments. Um, this is one of the muzzle brakes you can buy off of Amazon for less than $20 shipped. Um, they call it the competition, so and so, whatever. But it's I forget the name of the company, A and G, G G something. Anyway, I'll look it up and see if I can figure it out for you guys. But it's less than twenty dollars. It's super nice. It's steel. Um, it has three ports on the side. Obviously, you can see that it has two ports up here. No ports on the bottom, obviously. But um, it was uh, when I bought it, I was a little apprehensive because of what it was, and make sure there's when you buy any of this stuff because the tolerances may not be as good as uh, some of the um, higher end. Make sure you check your uh, tolerances in here to make sure you're not going to have a strike um, on any of these uh, ports uh, when the bullet exits, just to make sure you, know, you can eyeball most of that pretty good and get a uh, feel of what it's going to do. Make sure you're not going to have a strike. But I've never, they've sold a lot of these on the internet, uh, Amazon in particular, and nobody's ever had that complaint to my knowledge. And I've looked at a lot of the reviews on there. Um, but anyway, this was so nice. I actually bought one of these for my AR. Um, it's um, it's kind of similar in design to another particular um, compensator that uh, is on the market, but uh, this thing really works. It's loud. Uh, anytime you got a compensator, keep in mind, guys, these are going to be loud. Um, you're going to run your range buddies off, uh, especially anybody beside of you, but uh, they uh, they work pretty well. And uh, this one, uh, like I said, less than $20, and it comes with a, a crush washer, and they've got now 
where it comes with, there's another guy selling them I saw somewhere that sold, it comes with a crush washer and a, what they call a lock washer, or a lock nut, I guess uh, is a better word. Um, I've got both. I, this is a little cleaner fit, uh, but if you want to make it simple where it's easy to take on and off, and you don't have to keep buying crush washers, that locking nut uh, works really well. Um, that's pretty nice, and uh, I've got one of those that, uh, if I ever need it, and decide to go with that configuration. So anyway, guys, um, I know everybody's going to ask about the accuracy. I've not been able to uh, stretch this guy out really, really far. Um, when I first got it set up, um, it did really well straight out of the box with just the uh, other parts I had on it. And like I said, the uh, BSA scope and all that um, sighted in well. Uh, since I've updated some things, um, it, um, it shoots um, half to quarter MOA. Uh, in this current configuration uh, at 100 yards. I've not been able to stretch it. I've shot some at 200 yards. That's about the same. I haven't been able to stretch it out. I've got um, some time coming up, and I'm going to try going to uh, one of the 1,000-yard ranges that's uh, uh, near me. So be going over there and doing some. I'll try getting some footage of that and kind of show you what this thing will do. Um, I shoot currently, what I was shooting is factory ammunition. Um, I've shot uh, Federal Gold Medal Match, 168 grain and 168 grain uh, Winchester Match, and both of them shot very well. I think I'm gonna give the I'm gonna give it to um, Winchester, maybe by that much, but uh, uh, it could have been just my uh, the the loose nut behind the. Uh, stock that was causing that one way or another but uh, I think at the end of the day uh, both of them obviously good ammunition but you know certain rifles do shoot better and, and I may take uh, you may take a Winchester uh, current um, bullet and shoot it and it shoots great as far as the factory you get another lot number and it may shoot a little different and you may find another lot number out of a federal gold medal match or something that shoots better than either one or vice versa. So you just got to play with it. Um, but if you've got good factory ammunition right out of the box, these things are going to, these are going to perform very well, or at least mine did. Um, I'm really extremely happy with it. The good thing about Savage is in my opinion, they're probably one of the better rifles right out of the box. I've had some nice Remingtons. Um, the, um, I like Remingtons, love, love Remington 700s. I wanted to do something a little different, and I read a lot about Savages being great out of the box. Um, so I tried it, and I'm a believer. These guys are good. The triggers are great. I mean, the, they're actually kind of known for the AccuTrigger, obviously, and this one uh, was not. And I'm used to shooting Glock, so I was kind of used to that style with the uh, blade in it. That uh, uh, it, it really shoots and shoots well. And uh, I did have a little problem. I will mention this, um, and I, I always go with the good and bad. Um, when I first got this, now, one thing about Savage compared to Remington, the bolt is... And people, if you go on some of the websites or forums, they're talking about it's sloppy. And it is. That's just kind of the design of the way theirs is designed. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. That's just the way they're designed. But mine seemed to be like rubbing. It was like it was dragging. And at first, I thought it was just needing to be broke in. Um, and the more I worked with it and stuff and got to looking at it, it was dragging a little bit. So I called Savage. Explained to them my situation. And they actually, one of the customer service folks over there, really nice, um, got me with one of the gunsmiths uh, that builds the guns and works on the guns there at Savage. And he said that probably this um, bolt handle uh, was out of spec just a little bit. And it was dragging. Um, and where it was originally dragging was actually on the top of this safety. And then that's where I thought it was dragging. It was dragging there a little bit. But then I found out it was dragging just a little bit right there. So Savage said, hey, send it back. We'll fix it. And I said, look, I said, I've got this thing in a custom stock, this, that, and the other. I really didn't want to tear it down and, you know, send it back because they wanted the whole rifle. And I said, is there any way you could send me just the bolt handle? So uh, after talking to the customer service guy, they said, yeah. So they sent me out another bolt handle. And in the meantime, I went ahead and um, they said, when I asked him about being out of spec, I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, usually there's the relief on the metal. Uh, they just didn't have enough off of it. Um so anyway, I wound up uh, polishing up my old bolt and being able to fix it. And uh, the, uh, the new bolt did also correct it. But in the meantime, I was just kind of uh, playing around with it and got some uh, material out of here. And, and it's fine now. It doesn't drag or anything. It does great. But that's just kind of wanted to tell you, you know, like I said, no, no rifle's perfect uh, a lot of times out of the box. And you might have an issue, but as long as the customer service level's there and, and they, they took care of it very well and did not make me send my rifle back. They actually helped me out and sent me a bolt and no charge and all that. And it was super nice of those guys. And 
thumbs up to Savage for that. Um, now this whole configuration, as things progress and change, like I said, originally I had about a um, thousand dollars, just over a thousand dollars in it. In its current configuration, um, it is just over two thousand dollars. So you have to remember, this was five eighty, and then this was uh, let's say seven hundred. So you're going to spend just a lot in just these two pieces, not counting all the other bells and whistles that you stick on it or change around. Um, and when I say that price, I'm also including some um, other little odds and ends. And what I mean by that is like this um, sling here, I count that as in the rifle because I'm going to use it with this rifle, but it could obviously be taken off and used for another rifle. This is the TIS Quick Cuff. It's $70 just for that, so that's pretty expensive. Um, I've got a, a Condor uh, drag bag um, that um, actually is it unfolds once you get it and it, it, it unzip it unfolds into a shooting mat which is kind of neat uh condor a lot of people you know talk about condor's quality or whatever in my opinion i've always had good luck with condor um again i'm not going to durka durka stand and you know fighting whatever um but overall the quality uh, in my opinion for your standard uh, guy that goes to the range or whatever take some uh, training classes and stuff it'll do just fine and um it's usually got pretty good reviews and that bag was pretty nice the bag cost me about 60 bucks 70 dollars i think 70 dollars maybe 75 dollars um then i've got like a cheek rest thing that was another 20. Uh, so you know all these little odds and ends add up after a while and um the uh, total for that for the build is just over 2000 at this point uh with everything uh, guys, if you got any questions or critiques or whatever, please uh, do that in the comments. I'd like to hear from you guys. Again, just getting started with this uh, network and uh, uh, this channel and wanting to uh, share some knowledge and stuff that I currently use or, um, you know, I may buy something new and tell you what my thoughts are and so forth. And I'll, I'll go over a lot of different things. Uh, as the channel progresses. But uh, if you uh, have any questions or if you've got any um, suggestions, something you'd like to see or uh, ask about or ask me to look about or something, I'd be glad to answer that. Uh, maybe look into doing a review or something on some other products. And I'll be doing some other reviews, anything from possibly a knife, guns, gear, um, talk about prepping a little bit and, and sort of that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm going to include all that in the channel. But if you would uh, like, subscribe uh, and share and um, hopefully we can build a good channel for you guys and uh, share a lot of knowledge and if you got knowledge about something let's say you have the you know this rifle and something happened please share it in the comments because uh, that's how we help each other out and make good decisions as far as purchases and make sure our money's going where we need it um, so if you've had other things if you see something that you, you ask a question or say hey why do you do the kydex or why do you do this and uh, have you ever tried this go ahead and mention it you know hey um uh, we're all here to learn and, and figure things out and that's how we do it is uh, I'm not saying my rifle build is the best or the most excellent it's what I built I like it um, it does work well for me I can only tell you my experiences with it somebody else may have had a bad experience I don't know or you know whatever so and they may say hey why'd you spend 2000 you could have bought this you know everybody's kind of got their own opinion of what that uh, what that is I, I kind of like the whole you know building your own stuff and figuring it out and uh, kind of the fun part of it all. Uh, you know, they talk about the AR being the Barbie doll for guys. Well, I think guns in general, especially when you get into being able to add accessories and uh, different things to your uh, systems that uh, work and uh, that sort of thing. So again, guys, I appreciate you watching the video. If you got any questions, uh, comments, concerns, please post them. And if you would, uh, subscribe, like, and share. And thank you very much. And we'll get you another video out here shortly. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day.